You may have noticed I'm wearing the same thing as the recap that went up, but now I have a hat on. Different video. Uh, this one's gonna be weird. This is a weird one. I was not expecting a huge move from the Capitals at the trade deadline, but that is literally exactly what we got. We got the biggest move of the day at the trade deadline. So, uh, welcome to Chirpin DMV's uh, recap of the trade deadline for the Washington Capitals. So, we'll talk about the Michael Raffle one first. So, obviously, a bit of a minor deal, a bit of a depth deal. Capitals send a fifth. I think it was a conditional fifth over to Philly for Michael Raffle. We had Dan Silver on the podcast. Apparently Raffle is just like the most beloved guy in Philadelphia. Like, people are hating to see a third or fourth line guy go. You got to think he's bringing something to the table. Now, am I expecting a ton of offense from him? No, I, you shouldn't. I don't even know if he's going to fit in the lineup. I see him as more of a 13th forward depth who can play wing and center, which is clutch come playoff time. Because when our centerman went down with COVID and injuries, we looked a little weak up the middle. We had TJ Oshie in there, who is a winger. So I think it just offers a little flexibility. You can play up and down the lineup if injuries come, and they will. So it's just nice to have that reassurance, and especially if you gave up almost nothing to get him. Uh, let's talk about the big deal. So the Washington Capitals acquire Anthony Mantha from the Detroit Red Wings and send Jacob Vrana, Dick Panic a first this year and a second next year to the Detroit Red Wings. What a blockbuster out of left field trade this was for me personally. So my initial thoughts when I read it, uh, yeah, they were not positive. I was uh, pretty upset because I saw Jacob Vrana's name. And obviously everyone that's a Washington fan thought Vrana was a piece of the future. We had him and Wilson. They were our young guys. They were the future of this team. Vrana was going to wear the A. Wilson was going to wear the C. Vrana was going to be our 30 to 40 goal scorer. That was just what was set in stone. But obviously since Laviolette's come along and apparently even before then, Vrana's just had some, some difficulties working with the coaching staff. He's found his way out of the lineup a couple times this year. Year. But anyways, the reason why this video is going up today and not yesterday is because like I showed in those tweets I was very not happy when I first saw it, but I've sat on it for a day I'm much more level-headed than I was then probably would have made for a more entertaining video But anyways, I just feel like I can look at it from a more from a broader perspective instead of just Jacob Braun is gone, which was just tough news to see because I love Jacob Braun we all love Jacob Braun But let me just talk about why I think the trade happened because obviously for me and everyone it came out of left field The way I look at it was Laviolette was not a big wasn't big on Verona. It's like he obviously got health bombed a couple times. I don't think he was kind of playing the way that he wanted I don't think he thought that he was getting his best effort from him every night But I also think that GMBM liked Anthony Mantha. He just fits a GMBM roster so well he's like 6'5 230 just a monster on the puck can absolutely score can shoot can go into the dirty areas if you need him to he just fits the mold of a gmbm player just look at all the guys he gets the garnet hathaways the brendan dillons those are the kind of players he likes i think what happened was he had mantha on his radar for a while now he even said in his press he's been talking to the wings for a couple weeks about him so i think he had him on his radar i also think that he had salaries that he needed to dump because he's got ovechkin's contract coming up he's got barely any salary as it is right now and that's why dick panic was included in the deal but i think what happened happened was he told Stevie Y exactly what he wanted. He wanted Mantha and he needed to get rid of this contract. Stevie Y looked, he said, okay, I want Vrana as the piece coming back. I think the Capitals were willing to part with him because of what's been going on with him and the coaching staff this year. And I think since it's the deadline, guys who other teams want, you always got to overpay for him. Look at Felino going for a first. Look at Savard going for a first. Look at Taylor Hall not going for a first, by the way. What a bad deal. Um, anyways, so I think it was Vrana. Even Elliot Friedman said this on 31 Thoughts. I think it was Verona in the first to take on Mantha just because it's a deadline and that's how it works. And then it was Ponick and a second to take on Ponick's contract. So, so yes, it was a gross overpayment for one player, but there is a reason that this deal was made. He had to give up a ton, but his team is in salary cap hell and Verona is going to command a payday this offseason, whereas Mantha is already signed for like four years at 5.7 mil. So having Ponick still on the books and having Verona getting a raise, there would be no room to sign Ovechkin unless you traded another huge piece of the puzzle. And since Mantha's not a rental, you have that confidence in your salary cap. Now you know that you have him on the books for the next four years, 5.7 mil, and you know that he is probably gonna put up similar numbers to Verona, you have to hope, but you already have the contract situation figured out and he's only a year older than Verona. So you're not losing too much of that youth that I was talking about earlier. But this was not only trying to, trying to make their team better, this was also Look, this was also looking towards the future as much as people want to say it's not because they got rid of the first and second 
Something we have to acknowledge is the Capitals are going to have a late first round pick and this is probably one of the worst drafts in recent memory. Not only the draft class, but you can't scout anybody right now. There's barely any junior leagues playing. So if there's ever a year to give up a first, I'd say it's this year. The second is for next year. That's a little tougher, but at least it wasn't a first for next year. Because next year, hopefully things go back to normal. Scouting will happen as it should. Anyways, let's talk about Jacob Brana. Obviously, he's our baby boy. He was like a rookie when they won the cup. He was hilarious when they won the cup. He saw those photos of him just being wasted. He was like the MVP of the parade, shotgun and beers on the bus. He also scored huge goals in that cup run. Buried Pittsburgh in that comeback game. I want to say it was game three. I want to say it was game five. I think it was game five. I could be wrong. It was game three or five. Anyways, he was just clutch. He scored a goal in the cup final, in the final game of the cup final, first goal. So obviously we all have a special place in our hearts for Jacob Brana. So let's just talk about what we're losing in Brana. So obviously we're losing a potential 30 to 40 goal scorer during a regular non-COVID year. We're also losing, as AB said, probably some of the fastest three steps in hockey. This guy, his first three steps are buzzing. Detroit's gonna love that. That guy can fly. We're also losing one of the hardest, most deceptive shots in the NHL. When he's coming down the right wing, he shoots it in stride. It doesn't always go in because it's a little hard to shoot like that, if you don't know. The goalies have a lot of trouble stopping that because they don't expect a shot coming. This guy can laser the puck. And we're also just losing in a, like an amazing personality. This guy's hilarious. Everyone in the room loves him, obviously. Everyone in media says that he's just an awesome to deal with. So we're miss we're losing like a, just a great person. There's a lot of them in hockey and Braun is one of them. And we're also missing another piece of our cup team, which obviously hurts to see. There's only nine remaining now, I think. But the reality of the situation is he struggled to find ice even when he is in the lineup this year. And he was visibly frustrated. Like when he scored that OT goal and he just death stared Laviolette there was something there we weren't just crazy for thinking that he was benched earlier in that game he was pissed McClellan said he's a frustrated he's visibly a frustrated player he didn't request a trade but you can tell by looking at him the good news is when he goes to Detroit he's gonna get all the ice time because that franchise is dog water right now he's gonna get all the ice time he's gonna be the option on the first line power play for the shot it's not gonna be trying to get it to Ovi he's gonna be the guy on the power play he's gonna play first line minutes probably close to 20 minutes a game hopefully he's gonna thrive and I just genuinely wish him all the best because Verona was a huge piece of this team and we all loved him but with that being said let's look at what we're getting in Anthony Mantha because again the reality of the situation is we're not getting a slouch of a hockey player for him we're getting a pretty good guy and basically everything i'm going to tell you we talked about on the podcast and got from our buddies at the winged wheel podcast great guys very knowledgeable so much smarter than me i'm stuttering through this in a car i just look like a bozo compared to them but like i said what we're getting in mantha is contract confidence he's signed for four years i think at 5.7 mil we know what he's going to cost for the next certain amount of years whereas Brana, we didn't know what he was going to make he had arbitration rights he's an rfa this just gives mcclellan and upper management more confidence heading into the offseason of how they need to juggle their money around and on the ice we're getting a big skilled winger who can play the left or the right side who is deceptively fast we compared him to jack eichel just the way he doesn't look like he's going fast but he's going fast and he also just dominates the puck when this guy gets in there it's it's his puck to lose i believe is what they said they said the puck is off his stick when he chooses to lose it getting someone who can who is huge who can control the play control the puck like that it's just that's a that's huge going into playoffs. And it's not like he's just some grinder in the corners. The guy can shoot and he can score. They said he was their number one option on the power play for a long time in that one-timer position. I don't see why this can't make our second power play unit just as dangerous. I know Verona was kind of the same thing, but Manta, you can put him in front of the net. You can put him in the one-timer position. You'll probably still have Ovechkin on the other side. You'll have Schultz in the middle feed them. I think that'll be huge for our second power play unit. They did say that he isn't that physical, which is a little concerning considering he's like 6'5", 230. And and you need those physical guys in playoffs but I'm pretty confident with his size and weight he can take the abuse in the, the corners maybe not dish it out as much as we might want him to but I think he can take it and the thing is we're also getting a potential 30 to 40 goal scorer like Verona was so there are two players who had opposite issues going into new situations that should solve some problems so Verona so with Verona you're getting a guy who couldn't get that much ice time because the top six is just loaded and uh, a coaching staff that doesn't really work best with Verona going to a team that encourages speed where he's going to be on the first line where he's going to be on first line power play and he's probably going to thrive hopefully he's going to thrive then you have mantha who's playing upwards of 20 minutes a game was the guy on the power play for a long time doesn't play the speed game that detroit does he likes to slow it down he didn't have a lot of 
players around him that could get him the puck the way he might have needed to score those 30 to 40 goal seasons. He's coming to Washington where he's not the guy anymore. He's not as relied upon. He probably won't even make the first power play unit. But he's also on a team where he plays the style that Laviolette likes. He plays a heavier game. He also has guys who can get him the puck. He's going to be playing with Backstrom in his first game. So that guy knows how to get the puck to a, to a score. Just look at Ovechkin if you need references. So it's kind of two players who had opposite problems. Mantha didn't have the support system he needed. Coach wasn't playing the game that he liked to play. Now he's coming to Washington where all those boxes are checked and Verona vice versa. He likes the speed. He's not the guy here in Washington who needs more ice time. Going to a team that doesn't have enough players to take ice time from him that encourages his speed. Bottom line, yes, Washington overpaid to get rid of a contract and to bring in Mantha. On paper, Washington, yes, they got fleeced. They lost a first, a second, a unreal player in Verona and Dick Panic, who's no slouch at all. But when you actually think about it, when you sit on it for a day like I did, you'll see that Mantha is an unreal player who actually genuinely probably fits better into Washington systems than Verona does. You're getting rid of that panic contract. You're getting the contract confidence that you need because Ovechkin needs a new contract this offseason. Knowing what your players are making now instead of having to give them raises this offseason is really beneficial. On paper, it looks bad, but when you think about it, there are a lot of positives to this trade. I'm genuinely excited to see how Mantha fits into this lineup tonight. You know, V, we're going to miss you, Jake the snake you're the man but uh ant-man i saw that on twitter someone called anthony mantha ant-man unreal nickname so ant-man excited to see what you can do here welcome to dc let's go on a run here thanks for watching stay tuned for my next recap it's ant-man season in dc Devante. how is the pasta Devante? <laughs> so good baby <laughs> DSP, DSP, DSP. I try and get my left nut for the boy instead of fucking two goals. One is right here, and the other one is right here. Two goals. All time hockey, baby. All time fucking hockey. The game winning goal. The legend. The game winning goal. The Tiger. Yeah, we're going at two. The best defender in the league. <laughs> the best defense in the league. <laughs> hey, you suck. You suck at people. We. Hey. You suck at people. Okay. Here is the man. Here is the man. <laughs> Score! <laughs> Alexander Ovechkin! Jacob Brana! Nicholas Backstrom! <laughs> and Jacob Brana! Yeah, the goal scorer! The goal scorer! The silky mitts! The silky mitts! The Swedish power! The Swedish power right here! Oh, oh. I feel like you guys should know each other. Everybody knows yeah. each other when you do this. Yeah. Come on, boys. Fucking say hi to fans. Say hi. What's up, fans? Hi, this guy. Let's fucking go. <laughs>